All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome. We are so excited that you are joining us um, for the virtual college fair with the Rocky Mountain Association for College Admission Counseling. My name is James. I'll be hanging out as the facilitator for this session. Um, and you have some wonderful institutions that you're going to be hearing from. Just so everybody is on the same page, we are in session C5. So you'll see that on this screen on the upper right hand corner. And these are the six institutions that we'll be hearing from. Uh, just a few housekeeping items before we get started. If you're um, participating, you have the ability to ask questions using the Q&A function. One piece of advice is just to make sure you address those specifically to the school or schools that you're wanting to hear from. That way you get as uh, much specific information as possible. And your camera and microphone are off during this Zoom webinar, so we cannot see or hear you. So that Q&A function is going to be how you can communicate with us. There are additional sessions happening, not today, but next week. And then we will also be posting all of these sessions uh, within a about a week or so on strivescan.com slash Ramacac, R-M-A-C-A-C, and that will be um, also where you can sign up for additional sessions if you're wanting to do the um, night that's happening next week. So again, we are in session C5, so to kick us off, we are going to hear from the Missouri University of Science and Technology. Hello everyone, my name is Cindy Welch and I am the Assistant Director of Regional Recruitment for Missouri University of Science and Technology, also known as Missouri s and Missouri s and is located in Rolla, which is about halfway between Springfield, Missouri and St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Rolla is a small city with a population of just over 20,000 people in the city limits, plus we have about 8,000 students on campus and about 50,000 other people who come to um, our town for shopping and dining and entertainment and that type of stuff. Rolla is part of the South Central Ozark Highlands. So you're gonna find a lot of lakes and rivers, streams. People really enjoy camping, fishing, swimming, canoeing, kayaking, all kinds of fun outdoor activities. We also have a lot of caves in our area. Students really love the spelunking, zip lines, uh, we have over 300 acres of city parks and about 10 miles of walking and biking trails within the city limits. So Rolla has a really nice balance of urban development and small town charm. So you're going to find everything that you would want here in Rolla, Missouri. Missouri s and was founded in 1870 as one of the first technological universities west of the Mississippi River. So this year we are celebrating our 150th year. Uh, s and is ranked the number one public engineering university in the nation by payscale.com, the number one university in Missouri for alumni salary potential, the number one public university in Missouri, and our students have the best starting salary of any school in Missouri, and the number eight in the nation among all colleges and universities for annual return on investment. One of the really fun things is um, the National Campus Safety Summit has named Missouri s and the 20th safest campus in the nation. So we're really excited about that as well. s and is a medium-sized university and we have about 7,000, 7,600 students from all across the United States and around the world. About 6,100 are undergraduate students and about 1,500 are graduate students. We have a student to faculty ratio of 18 to one and the average class size is less than 30 students. s and offers 99 degree programs in 40 areas of study. In the College of Arts, Sciences and Business, we have the sciences like biology, chemistry, physics, humanities and liberal arts, an AACSB accredited undergraduate business program, teacher certifications, pre-professional programs such as pre-med, pre-vet, pre-law, and we have a direct entry program into the St. Louis College of Pharmacy. But Missouri s and is best known for our engineering programs. In the College of Engineering and Computing, we have about 15 different undergraduate engineering majors, as well as computer science and geology and geophysics. Last fall, we introduced a new global engineering program where students can earn two bachelor's degrees in five years. They will receive a Bachelor of Science in any engineering field of their choice and a Bachelor of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies with a minor in Spanish or French. These students will study abroad one semester and have an engineering internship uh, abroad another semester. 
ST also has several unique engineering minors, such as biomedical, explosives, and humanitarian. We have focused research in several areas and undergraduates can participate in research as early as their freshman year. ST has over 250 clubs and organizations that you can get involved with. We have 19 student design teams where students develop their problem solving, teamwork, and business skills while designing and building race cars, robots, rockets, canoes, bridges, and much more. ST has 15 NCAA Division II varsity athletic teams, and they place fifth all time among NCAA Division II colleges and universities for Capital One Academic All-American selections. We also have intramural and club sports and about 23% of students participate in Greek life. We have theater, band, orchestra, art, and so much more. Missouri s and has two career fairs each year, which are among the largest in the Midwest. Last year, over 4,000 different employers actively recruited s and students at career fairs on campus events and online through our job portal. The average starting salary for students graduating with a bachelor's degree is over $67,500. And students doing internships and co-ops earn an average of $3,300 per month. s and students go to work for Fortune 500 companies all across America, including Amazon, Boeing, Google, NASA, SpaceX, and many more. We're still accepting applications for fall of 2021 and students can apply test optional this year. You can apply free on our application or on the Common App until July 1st. For those of you who are younger students, you can apply during the summer before your senior year. We are extending our test optional policy for fall of 22 applicants as well. And we accept AP, IB and dual enrollment credit. Missouri s and is very affordable and we offer excellent merit-based scholarships. Our most prestigious scholarship for out-of-state students is the Distinguished Scholars Award. It is a competitive scholarship worth three, or excuse me, worth $30,000 per year. And it's renewable for four years. You can apply for this and many other scholarships on our database after you've been admi admitted to Missouri s and we are currently offering on-campus visits, virtual presentations, Q&A sessions with faculty, current students and staff, and many other opportunities. You can find all of our visit options at visit.mst.edu. If you have any questions about Missouri s and you can reach out via phone, email, or on social media. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we hope to see you soon. Wonderful. Thank you so much for getting us started. And uh, students, just as a reminder, please feel free to utilize that Q&A for any questions that you have and make sure you direct those questions specifically to the institution that you are wanting to hear from. We are now going to hear from Texas Tech University. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate it. Hi everyone, welcome. My name is April Tipton. I serve as one of the lead admissions counselors for Texas Tech University. I'm super excited that I have Jen Miller who's also helping me out today. So if you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask any questions because Jen will be happy to answer any questions that you may have during this presentation. I'd like to tell you a little bit about Texas Tech University. We are a big public university with over 40,322 students to be exact. We're still able to maintain 20 to one student to teacher ratio. We are a tier one research university and we have 52% male, 48% female. Our average SAT score is 1171 at Texas Tech University. Also with that being said, to tell you a little bit more about tech, um, we are six hours away from Dallas, eight hours away from Houston. We have over 300,000 Lubbock residents, 
78% of our new students come farther than 300 miles away from home, which you can see here on this map. So you can definitely see that we definitely are not a suitcase campus where you're going to be coming home on the weekends. Uh, the distance students travel to Lubbock creates a very unique college experience. Tech is a very much so traditional campus. Our student body is extremely involved in organizations, spirits, and traditions at Texas Tech. They typically do not go home, like I mentioned, on the weekend like you may expect. Uh, so that's why we encourage our students to be involved in maybe one of our clubs or organizations at Texas Tech. Yes, there is an international airport in Lubbock, which is about 10 minutes away from campus that makes it easy for our students to travel quick to and from Lubbock. Again, people at Lubbock love Texas Tech with lots of school spirit, nothing, I kid you not, we wear nothing but red and black here at Texas Tech University. Also with that being said, at Texas Tech University, we have 10 different academic colleges, that's also including Honors College, with over 150 academic programs. And that's also included, that's all consisting of undergrad, graduate, pre-law, medical, all under one campus. We're very excited to announce that we're actually starting a veterinary um, school as well, which is actually gonna be located in Armawillow, Texas, which we are going to be the second one in the state of Texas. So this is actually going to be opening up in the fall 2021. So we're very excited to say the least. Also, with that being said, again, we have over 550 clubs and organizations at Texas Tech, 19 different resident halls at Texas Tech. So you are required to live on campus your first year. 30 plus dining venues, Chick-fil-A, um, just to name an example. Uh, so that's one of the popular ones at Texas Tech. And also with that being said, we have a beautiful uh, 242 square rec center. We have this beautiful lazy river on campus. As I mentioned earlier, we do have spirits and traditions at Tech. Um, um, one of our traditions is Carol of the Life, and we are Division I, part of the Big 12 um, at Texas Tech University. So there are four necessary um, requirements that you can do to apply to Texas Tech University. We use the Common App or the Applied Texas. We do not prefer one over the other. There is a $75 application fee. Um, also, with that being said, if you need a fee waiver, we uh, definitely look into those. We will need your high school transcripts, but you can go ahead and upload your unofficial ones so we can make a decision uh, for you much sooner. But we will need your official transcripts um, as well once you're admitted to tech. As far as official SAT and ACT scores, we have moved to test optional for the fall 22, which we're very excited, which means you do not have to supply your SAT and ACT scores so as to be admitted to Texas Tech in your application. It will ask you whether or not if you would like to use your test scores to be considered for admissions. So you would just simply click on uh, the little uh, test optional that you would like to go test optional. However, um, if you do want to supply us your SAT and ACT scores, uh, those would be more so for using for TSI requirements or for presidential scholarships, which I'll be discussing in just a moment. Also, keep in mind, we do super score at Texas Tech. And once we have all your documents, again, it takes two to four weeks for a decision to be made at Texas Tech University. There are two types of assured admissions and admissions to apply to Texas Tech University. We have the assured admissions, which just a shortcut. So if you're in the top 10% of your class with a distinguished diploma, that's all we need to know. You're in the top 25%. And 1180 super score of a 24. Also with that being said, um, with the 24 super score, ACT will go to, will also be admitted. Scores, keep in mind, and rankings go down. Some majors require short admissions to enter in some of our programs. So if you don't meet those requirements, no problem at all. You're simply just going to go through the application review process. So we're going to be looking at your essays, letters of recommendation, your course rigorous work um, as well, curricular activities, um, your just history, just anything that can tell us more to favor a decision that we can make for you too as well. At Texas Tech, keep in mind, this is the tuition here. So this uh, tuition that you see here is going to be for our out-of-state students, which is $23,870. And for in-state students um, at uh, in Texas is eleven sixty. One thing that I do want to share with you all, if you do qualify for a $1,000 scholarship from Texas Tech, that's where you'll get the in-state tuition versus the out-of-state tuition. So if we have any out-of-state students here, please let us know. Um, I'm coming to you live from San Diego, California. Jen's for it that's based out in Colorado. We would love to get in contact with you as well. Again, if you receive a $1,000 scholarship from Texas Tech University, that's where you're going to be getting the in-state versus the out-of-state tuition. We do offer presidential scholarships too as well. 
Um, again, these are based off of your SAT and ACT scores. Um, if your high school doesn't rank, we'll rank for you based off of that as well. You can submit these scores all the way up until June 1st of your senior year. We do have Matador scholarships for our students that are applying for test optional. These are our renewal requirements here too as well. Again, um, if you want to go ahead and create a Rater Connect portal, this is where you can actually upload your documents here um, as well. Um, so again, you can check your status, upload your documents, register for events um, too as well, and sign up for virtual events just like this, academic events, scholarship events, financial aid events um, as well. Also with that being said, I just wanna thank all of you for joining us this evening, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, and we appreciate your time. Fantastic. Thank you so much to Texas Tech University for joining us. And again, just as a reminder, students, please utilize that Q&A if you have any questions for our representatives that are joining us and just make sure that you direct those specifically to the school that you're wanting to hear from. Um, and also keep an eye on the chat. Our institutions are sending some really valuable information about their um, college or university. This um, links, different things like that that you can look at. So moving right along, we are now going to hear from Michigan Technological University. Hello and welcome. Um, my name is Nanette Carlson and I am a regional admissions manager based in the Minneapolis and St. Paul, Minnesota area. So thanks for spending some time with us this evening. So Michigan Technological University is a comprehensive research university with a STEM focus. With about 7,000 students, we are the perfect size for a student who wants to feel at home and have almost endless opportunities. We're located in Houghton, Michigan, the Upper Peninsula, in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So our students build and launch nano satellites. We make, they make prosthetic ankles better they can, and they connect robots with kids. This year alone, Michigan Tech undergraduates spent 126,000 hours working alongside faculty mentors on paid research. Huskies go on to earn the ninth highest starting salaries in the country at around $65,000 a year. So it's a future like no other for our graduates. Included in a student's tuition at Michigan Tech is, or tuition and fees, is access to all of the stuff that you see here on the screen. So we do own our own ski hill, we own our own golf course, we have 35 kilometers of Nordic ski trails on our campus. So once on campus, our Huskies experience a truly residential college experience with tight-knit dorm communities and more than 240 clubs and organizations. New this year at Michigan Tech is co-ed varsity esports. Otherwise, we have NCAA Division II sports for men and women and Division I men's hockey. So next, we're gonna talk a little bit about the admissions process. So we have always had a free application at Michigan Tech. We are still taking applications for this coming fall. And for those of you that are maybe juniors um, or maybe even sophomores, the applications for the, that following year will open June 15th of, of your uh, senior year, upcoming senior year. So students usually hear back from us within about two to three weeks of applying and submitting their transcripts. So we are um, continuing to be test optional again uh, for this fall. So um, certainly uh, remember that as you go through. So we're not requiring test scores. Also, we require a 2.75 high school GPA with a minimum 1110 SAT or 22 ACT or a 3.0 GPA without test scores. So the average freshman arrives on campus with a 3.78 GPA and a 1260 SAT or 27 ACT. So world-class education is an investment. So non-Michigan residents are looking at a total cost of around $51,000 a year. So note that tuition is a flat rate for 12 to 18 credits. So we want to help students budget for their annual expenses while being able to explore courses outside of their major. More than 90% of our students qualify for financial aid and a wide range of automatic merit scholarships and competitive scholarships. In addition, co-ops and internships help students earn money while gaining incredibly valuable practical experience. More than 415 companies recruit our students on campus at the nation's second largest career fair. Now let's chat a little bit more about some of our campus traditions. So Winter Carnival is a celebration of all things winter. Uh, each February, students get a four day weekend to build snow sculptures, race dogs, compete in human ice bowling, and just enjoy the inevitable snow. 
broom ball. Um, so think hockey with a ball, but on shoes and with brooms instead of sticks. So we have a huge tournament during winter carnival. Over 2,000 students play broom ball every year. So that equates to about 240 different teams. So very popular on campus. And then we have our Parade of Nations, which captures the spirit and unity of our incredibly diverse community by parading through the city in traditional dress followed by celebrations across campus. And then of course there's homecoming and uh, cardboard boat race racing isn't always successful, but it is always a highlight to end off homecoming week. So I can't wait to talk with you more about the Husky family. So please contact me, I'm always here to help. So thanks and have a great evening. Wonderful, thank you so much for that uh, information. And moving right along, we are now going to hear, uh, excuse me, we are going to hear from the Oregon Institute of Technology. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining. My name is Monica. I hope that you can see my slides just fine. Um, my name is Monica, I'm an admissions counselor here at Oregon Tech and I'm excited to chat with you all today a little bit about what we have to offer. So moving right along, um, the number one thing that I like to point out about Oregon Tech is that our students are extremely successful. We have about a 96% graduate success rate. What that means is that if you graduate with a degree from Oregon Tech, 96% of our students are employed or furthering their education in graduate studies within six months of graduation. So we're a polytechnic university. We are Oregon's only polytechnic university. And that means that we give our students a hands-on experience. We really focus on applied learning, making sure that you're not just learning theory and textbooks, but you're also able to apply um, what you are learning in the real world. So hands-on experience. And I do think that that hands-on experience is what really gets our students um, to be so successful. Not only are you being successful in graduating and going to where you want to be, but our graduates are also starting out with an average starting salary of about $60,000 per year. Um, so definitely also starting out with a high salary as well. We have a total enrollment of about 5,000 students across all of our campuses. So we are a rather small institution. However, um, definitely we are, you know, able to provide smaller class sizes for our students because of that. So our students across all campuses, again, 5,000, but specifically at our Klamath Falls campus, which is located in Southern Oregon, we have about 2,300. And we typically recommend our Klamath Falls campus to all first year students, because it is a um, more residential campus. You get your residence hall experience. You, we have our NAIA athletic teams. We have most of our 40 academic programs located there, as well as most of our clubs and organizations. We also have a campus up in um, Wilsonville, which is our Portland Metro commuter campus. But typically for first year students looking for that traditional college experience, we recommend our main residential campus in Klamath Falls. Now I'm going to briefly, briefly touch on some of the degrees that we have to offer here at Oregon Tech. Um, first, starting out with our engineering and technology programs. My favorite one to point out here is our renewable energy engineering bachelor's degree. This is because we were the first institution in the United States to have a bachelor's degree in renewable energy engineering. Um, as you might have seen on the previous slide, we are in a geothermal hotspot and we also have solar panels near campus. So our students are really gaining that hands-on experience in an area that is renewable, renewably powered. We also have our CSET programs over here on the right. Um, this would be what you would want to look into if you're interested in computer science related um, programs. Then moving on to our tech infused business degrees. Some of these might look a little bit familiar to you like accounting, marketing, or management, but we also have some other um, interesting ones as well, such as cybersecurity and health informatics and healthcare management. Health informatics is essentially an IT degree, but in the health field specifically, and healthcare management is essentially a management degree, but in the health field specifically. And then we have our health arts and sciences degrees as well. Over on the left, we have our closed cohort programs. These programs do require a secondary application. So they are typically our more competitive programs because of that secondary application. Um, but they do require a certain number of prerequisites and then you would apply into that 
professional portion of the program. My favorite one to point out here is our medical imaging technology department because we offer the five modalities in bachelor's degrees. We are the only institution in Oregon to have those five bachelor's degrees. Um, so if you're looking for medical imaging, like scanning of hearts, ultrasound, x-rays, this could be for you. And then we also have our biohealth sciences degree over here on the right. This degree is for if you're looking to go into medical school in the future, or if you're looking to become a dentist, whatever you're interested in, this one's for you. And then our applied sciences degrees down here on the bottom, typically they're a little bit more general, so you can go into many different um, career paths with these ones. Um, so if you're interested in maybe becoming an admissions counselor like all of us, uh, maybe communication studies could be right for you. But these are all great programs and please let us know if you ever have any questions about them in the future. I'm gonna to quickly touch on our admissions requirements as well. We typically are a little bit different than you might find at other institutions. We look at 15 core subjects. They're all listed here on the left. Um, and we usually are looking for about a 3.0 or higher unweighted core GPA. If you don't have that, or if you're not sure if you have that, I highly recommend submitting your application anyway, um, because we are reviewing your application anyway, and we will definitely review it, even if you're lower than a 3.0. So if you're around like a 2.5, 2.4, 2.3, please submit your application anyway. Um, we do not require any essays, no letter of recommendations. We don't require a second language. We are ACT and SAT optional. We also don't even require a transcript. And the reason for that is because our application is a self-report application. That means that you're going to create your application and put in the courses and the grades that you received in each of those courses. Um, the only time that we'll ask for a transcript is when you graduate from high school. We ask that you send that official transcript to us. We do have a $50 application fee. However, I highly encourage you to ask for a fee waiver code. I do not want that to be the reason that you don't apply to our school. Um, so please, please, please reach out and ask for that fee waiver code. We'd love to waive that for you. And then over on the right, you'll see some important dates and deadlines. So November 1st is typically our application priority date. Um, I would recommend if you're still a senior, we are still accepting applications. So please feel free to submit your application anytime um, soon. But the reason that we ask that you apply it sooner rather than later, such as November 1st, is so that you can start preparing for our main scholarship deadline of March 1st. So I definitely recommend looking into that. We do offer many different scholarships based on merit or based on a secondary application. Um, and then our commitment and deposit deadline is May 1st. And then I am just going to conclude really quickly. This here is my contact information. Again, my name is Monica. Feel free. I am here for you. Let us know if you have any questions or concerns. We'd be happy to help. Um, I do want to mention we are doing in-person visits. So I would say that that's probably the best way to find out if a school is right for you. So I'd love to see you on campus in the near future. Typically, they're Monday through Friday at 10 and 2. Um, but please feel free to reach out if you ever have any questions or concerns. We'd love to help you along the way. And thank you so much for all of your time. Have a great rest of your all day. Thank you so much and uh, uh, to the Oregon Institute of Technology. And just as a heads up to our attendees, we have just two more presentations to go. So make sure that if you have questions, you get those sent in so that we have ample time to answer those for you. Uh, we are now going to hear from the Rochester Institute of Technology. Okay, hi, thank you for joining us. My name is Molly Lane and I am an assistant director in the admissions office at Rochester Institute of Technology or RIT. Um, so a little bit about RIT in general, um, we are located about six miles south of Rochester, New York, which is in upstate New York, about five hours north of um, New York City. So um, that's where our main campus is located. We are a pretty large university um, with over 16,000 students attending our main campus. Uh, we are a very diverse um, population geographically. We represent, are represented um, by all 50 states and 90 different countries. We also have um, about 900 or so deaf and hard of hearing students on our campus as well, because we are home to one of two deaf and hard of hearing colleges in the country. Um, the college on our campus is called National Technical Institute for the Deaf or NTID. 
And we do have very small classes for the size of our university. So our average class size is about 22 students and the student to faculty ratio is about 13 to one, which is very small for um, a university our size. So because we're an Institute of Technology, we're very well known for our STEM programs, particularly engineering and computing. Uh, we have lots of programs in those areas, but we do um, like people that are looking at RIT to know that we have uh, programs in many different areas. So we have a very highly ranked college of business. We also have a nationally uh, recognized uh, college of art and design. We have a College of Engineering Technology, a College of Liberal Arts, um, a College of Science, and then also a separate College of Health Science. So programs offered in many different areas. Um, we also offer many of these programs as minors. So students, um, any student is able to earn one minor or more in different areas, either that they're interested in or that supports their, um, their main program. So we were very proud recently to be recognized as one of only nine national universities by US News and World Report for our co-op program, internships and undergraduate research. Um, so this really kind of gives you an idea of the quality and the depth of our experience-based education that we do offer students. Um, the main thing on this list that I do want to talk about, and we would never talk about RIT without mentioning this, is our cooperative education program. We are actually one of only four schools in the country currently that has a mandatory cooperative education program. We have one of the largest and oldest programs in the country. So University of Cincinnati, Drexel, Northeastern, and RIT are the big four. Um, most of our students are required to go out and work full time in their field while they're earning their undergraduate degree. Um, they are assigned a co-op advisor that helps them to find these placements. We have two big job fairs um, for all students on campus every year. We currently partner with over 3,400 companies worldwide. So lots of different opportunities um, for students to find these co-op placements. Um, and obviously, the big takeaway um, from our co-op program is our job placement rate. So overall, our job placement rate is 94%. Um, we do survey every senior when they leave RIT um, to find out what they're doing after they graduate. Um, so this number we feel is very accurate because we do hear from most of our graduates. You can find more specific information about job placement rate on our website. Many of our programs have 100% job placement rate, which we're very proud of. There is a listing of some of the companies that we do partner with here on this slide. Um, but like I said, there's over 3,400. So you can actually find information on our website about what companies um, students in each major typically do their co-op with or um, eventually hire our students. And you can find that information at joboutlook.rit.edu. So research is another thing that we're very well known for. And the biggest reason is we um, offer research to students as early as their first year starting at RIT. Um, usually research is only available to upperclassmen or graduate students, um, but we have freshmen doing research with their professors on campus, either part-time during the semester or full-time in the summer. And uh, we have many students that present at conferences on their research. Um, they may also be published um, in journals. So, uh, a really big part of a lot of our programs at RIT is research. Um, we are very supportive of students um, and their innovation and creativity on campus. We have a lot of different ways that we support students with this. We have a big festival every year in the spring um, that we invite the community to, to show what students are working on as far as business ideas and products. We usually have about 30,000 people that day on campus um, that are finding out a little bit more about what's going on at RIT. Um, we do have a building on campus called the Magic Center. It was completed um, a couple years ago. MAGIC is an acronym that stands for Media Arts Games um, 
imagination and creativity. And this is a digital research facility. We have a 7,000 foot soundstage, color correcting equipment. Um, it is a place where students can develop games and apps. We're currently number two in the country for our video game design program. So those students are often working in this center um, using the different facilities there. We also have a competition every year similar to Shark Tank called Tiger Tank. Um, where students can get funding and patents on different ideas that they have. And there are a lot of construct and maker spaces on campus where students have access to all different kinds of technology. Um, study abroad is a very important part of going to college if it's something that you're interested in. We actually have campuses in other countries, so you can find RIT in China, Croatia, Kosovo, and Dubai. Um, so those are easy study abroads if you're interested, but we do offer study abroad in 55 countries, or you could do your co-op in another country, which we call work abroad. We do have um, 50 different options for combined accelerated pathways, which um, this allows students to earn two degrees, a bachelor's and a master's degree in five years, as opposed to six. So this um, saves students a lot of time and money. Um, not only are you getting it done in a shorter amount of time, but we do offer scholarships for the graduate portion of these programs. Normally, students apply for these in the second year at RIT, but we are starting this year offering a direct entry into these programs for freshmen coming in that we identify um, as good candidates for these programs as well. Um, we're always advancing, always moving forward. We just opened a new Global Cybersecurity Institute for our computing security program. We also have a new building, an innovative maker and learning complex opening. Um, this will have more makerspace for students, group project areas, more areas for our performing arts. And these buildings were due to a donation we received from a recent graduate of RIT named Austin McCord. He started his own computing security company called Datto, which was very successful. He has since sold the company and offered us our largest donation ever of $50 million. And he graduated from RIT just a few short years ago. So that's very impressive. Um, there's lots of ways to find out more about RIT. We're offering tons of different virtual opportunities, um, virtual campus tours, virtual residence hall tours, virtual academic sessions. We are um, having people on campus for tours as well, seven days a week. Um, and then there is contact information here for our office in general or for me if you um, would like to reach out and ask more questions about anything. Um, I didn't talk about our admission requirements or anything. That's all on our website, so you can find that. Um, I just wanted to touch on some of the things that I think do make RIT a little bit different. Um, so please let us know if um, you have more questions or there's anything we can do to help. And thank you for joining us tonight. And thank you so much for the wonderful information from the Rochester Institute of Technology. Uh, we have just one more presentation to go, so make sure if you have any questions, you get those in as soon as possible so that we can make sure to answer those. And last but certainly not least, we are going to hear from South Dakota Mines. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name's Kristen. I'm a regional admissions counselor for the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology. I'm located in Colorado. So I'll go over a little bit about our school. All right, so a few things here, um, a few fast facts. So South Dakota Mines is a small public STEM university with about 2,500 students. We're located in Rapid City, which is about a six hour drive from Denver in the beautiful Black Hills region. The climate sees all four seasons and there are great opportunities to explore the outdoors. We have lots of different national parks, um, including Mount Rushmore. That's what we're, our area is known for. Uh, we also have lots of state parks, that, uh, lots of wind tunnels, lakes, um, hiking trails, all that fun stuff. So our students are very um, into the outdoors. Rapid City has about 75,000 people, so it's a good size and has all the amenities that you would need. And we actually do have a regional airport too, which is about 15 minutes from campus. So as I said, we're pretty small. We have 2,500 students. Our average class size is around 24 students. Um, the student to faculty ratio is 15 to one. Typically our freshman class is about 
500 students. And we were established in 1881 to educate the gold miners in the Black Hills. And we have about 50% of our student population coming in from out of state and about 41 countries and 28, 41 states and 28 countries are where our students are um, coming from. So as a STEM school, we offer 20 different majors, all in engineering, math, science, and technology. But if you are undecided, you can come in as an undeclared major. Um, as an undeclared major, you're put into our introduction into majors class and you're introduced to all of our majors. And then um, you have an, a special advisor that helps you kind of decide which area you want to focus on. The uh, university focuses on hands-on learning in and out of the classroom. Uh, we build race cars, concrete canoes, we dig up fossils, we build apps, uh, race ro robotics, all that fun stuff. So all of our majors are very hands-on. As an estimated cost of attendance, uh, we offer students from Colorado um, our in-state tuition rate. So that's called the South Dakota Advantage Rate. As you can see in this little table here, um, tuition and fees, we estimate around 12,000 for the year. That's 30 credit hours. And um, fees are um, our average there. Books and supplies, including our tablet PC is around $2,000 for year, the year. Our room and board average is around 8,000. And so the yearly cost for a Colorado student um, would be around $22,000. Uh, College Factual has actually named us the best value in engineering um, universities for the past two years. So we're really proud of about that. Um, they look at estimated costs as well as return on investment. So. Some of our um, dining facilities and housing facilities include Connolly, Palmerton, Peterson, and Placer Hall and Rocker Square One and Two. Um, there's a mixture of doubles, um, single rooms, although those are very limited, um, and quads and then apartment style housing as well. And South Dakota has you live on campus for two years. Um, after that, you can live on campus or you can move off. We also have several dining facilities, including an Einstein's Bagels, and then our main dining hall and a grab and go location called the Miner Shack. And that's our little statue there of our mascot. His name is Grubby. So a little bit about our internships, co-ops and research. So this is a huge component of our um, learning on campus. So 79% of our students will do at least one paid internship or research or co-op experience before they graduate. Students go to 33 different states, 184 employers. Um, we have the average wage for internships is around $19 an hour. Um, we have two career fairs every year that students will go to and that's the way most of our students will get their internships or co-op experiences. Um, there's a lot of great research going on as well. One of our big highlights for research is our Sanford Underground Research Facility or SURF. And that is a converted gold mine just in, located in the Black Hills about uh, 30 minutes away. And so they do all kinds of cutting edge um, research. And then as far as return on investment, our salaries and placement rates are really strong. Average starting salary for our students is around 66,516. Our average placement rate, so students who are, who are employed in their area of uh, major within 12 months is 96%. And they go all over the place too. You can see some of those examples of logos that um, some of the, our big names that students go to, as, um, to be employed, but uh, they range from local companies, regional companies, national, multinational. So you can go about anywhere you want to. We also do have a, a, quite a few students who start their own businesses as well. Uh, student support and services on campus. There's lots of ways that uh, you will be supported. Uh, we have career services that help with placements and internships, all that good stuff. Our student success centers there um, to help you adjust to uh, college, um, things like that. We have a great uh, ADA and counseling services. We have a pre-health pathways program. So all the students, all your students who, um, who wanna go into the health field after their bachelor's degree, you'll work with our pre-health advisor and you can get those internships, those shadowing experiences, all those things they'll help you set up um, for, to be prepared to go on to professional school. We have a great center of inclusion. Our international center helps students um, get ready to study abroad, 
health services, and we have a WISE center, which is women in science and engineering. And um, all of our female students are placed with a, uh, a female mentor from the WISE Center um, their freshman year. Beyond the classroom, there's tons to do. Um, we have 110 different uh, student organizations and clubs. And so there, there's a lot of fun there. And then we also have several traditions. My favorite is climbing and whitewashing M Hill, which you can see in that picture. Um, we throw paint on the, the letters and then slide down them on frizz. And then just a few things, um, we have rolling admission. Uh, the main deadline you need to look at is our scholarship deadline, which is January 15th of your senior year. You need to be accepted by that date. All the information's on our website for, for that. And then if you need um, anything, if you have questions, you wanna contact me, here is all my contact information that is also on our website. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much to South Dakota School of Mines for that information and to all of our representatives for joining us. Um, I just wanted to give a few little um, housekeeping items as we're wrapping up this evening. Um, first of all, there is going to be a survey whenever you exit this webinar. It just will take a couple of seconds to do, um, and it helps StriveScan plan future virtual event offerings. And so um, please answer that. It's very helpful for us. And there will be additional sessions um, happening next week, as well as um, the video recordings will be available for this night of presentations next week and you will be able to access those at strivescan.com slash ramacac r-m-a-c-a-c so thank you again to our representatives for joining us and just for the wonderful information they've provided and students parents counselors thank you so much for joining um, us as well as participants this evening we hope that you have a wonderful and safe night thank you <music>